Good morning and welcome to the Citizen Sports Blist Saturday Sports Desk Halloween Spooktacular. I'm your host, Rock Manlington, and with me as always is Ace Sporto. Good afternoon. Today we're talking about all the Friday night results of local football. And the first game we have to talk about is the Fayette County Tigers' eighth win of the season, defeating Bannock a 38-12. to Brandon Boykin, the quarterback, also did well on defense last night with two interceptions and one return, 74 yards for a touchdown. Matt Daniels had three touchdowns and 94 yards rushing. In fact, Ace, you spoke with Matt Daniels earlier in the day, and didn't he call that? Matt Daniels predicted a three-touchdown game. He's amazing. That's downright Ruthian. Let me tell you something about Matt Daniels. He's kind of a big deal. People know him. He's a good player. Other scorers last night were Marquise Dixon with a touchdown in the third quarter, and Luis Martinez had a 30-yard field goal. Defensively, Josh Atwater recovered a fumble. Fayette County looked pretty dominant last night, Kevin. Do you expect that to continue for the rest of the year? Yes, I do. I fully expect them to win the region title, and I think they're going to look as good as my sexy mustache that I'm wearing <laughs> right now. That's right. We're the only mustachioed sports team in the county. And Remember we look that. good wearing it, too. Now, the game I went to last night was Landmark Christian versus Mount Pisgah. Landmark won 56-7. This game was over pretty much after it started. Walter Leonard had four first-half touchdowns. And he turned 18 yesterday, so now he can vote in the upcoming elections. Good for you. Leonard had 167 yards rushing on the night. Quarterback Tanner Bryant had three touchdowns and 149 yards rushing. And Brock Pollard added a one-yard a one, one touchdown late in the third quarter. The defense of Landmark has really led the way for them, Ace. Blake Austin recovered a fumble. Linebacker Luke Griffith, Andrew Glaze, they look great. Sheldon Peters and John Murphy both had a sack. The entire defensive unit has played well. They really rebounded from that loss last week. That defense seemed to be hungrier than a pack of ravenous wolves. Hmm, I agree. Now, the game you went to, oh, actually, we're going to move on to, Mur sorry, McIntosh. They picked up their second win of the season last night, defeating Northgate 14-11. to 287 yards rushing for the Chiefs. And Matt Miller had a big game for the defense, really stopping some key Northgate drives. Nick Popeil scores the first touchdown for McIntosh, and he and Bradley Larson, who scored the second touchdown, controlled the clock and helped get that 287 yards on the ground. They've made a 200% improvement from last year. That's pretty significant. That is significant, and McIntosh with another win. What's next, Michael? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe things will fall from the sky. <laughs> uh... Another game last night, Stars Mill versus Woodward. Stars Mill defeats t Woodward 28-12. to They bounce back from last week's 35-7 to loss at the hands of rival Whitewater. Spencer Penson has two touchdowns. Parker DuPont and Miles J each had one on the ground. The defense did a pretty good job of shutting down the War Eagles. Uh, tell me a little bit about the people that lead that defense, Ace. Well, you always have you know, Parker DuPont at linebacker, and Stephen Roberts at linebacker, and Chris Suddeth at linebacker, and you got to wonder who else is playing linebacker for them. Maybe I'll be playing linebacker <laughs> for them soon. Who knows? And Nate Baker at defensive end, too. You can't forget that fabulous kid and the way he plays. Well, you know, we've also seen Blake DiBartolo and uh, Corey, the guy that in the Baconator contest. Oh, Corey, Corey Coleman. Coleman. But yes. he's an offensive lineman. Oh, he does not play defense as well? No, Rock. That's... I'm sorry. Yeah, it'll be okay. I'm sorry about that. You have to wonder, Mike, what would you rather have as a pet? A panther or a war eagle? Hmm. I believe I'd have a panther. Right. Uh, me too. They are sleek and supple. Yes. We're and gonna... sexy. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back to talk about the rest of the games from last night. It's game time, Fayette County. Stay tuned. Train with the pros at Velocity Sports Performance. Athletes need to learn good mechanics to reduce their likelihood of injury and to improve their speed, power, and agility. Athletes are trained by expert coaches where hundreds of pro athletes have trained. Whether you're a pro or just want to train like one, Velocity Sports Performance is the place for you. Welcome back to the Citizen Sports Blitz Saturday Sports Desk Halloween Spooktacular. Brought to you by Velocity Sports Performance in Peachtree City. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you about a little place I like to go to on the weekends. It's called X Playground. Not only can I eat pizza, wings, sandwiches, but I can watch 
football on a big screen TV, and I can bring my little laptop computer, check on how my fantasy team's doing. It's a lovely place to go, located in Peachtree City on Dividend Drive. You should check it out. Now, the game you went to last night was Our Lady of Mercy, and they fell to uh, Whitfield Academy 58-24. to Tell me what you saw, Ace. I'll tell you what I saw. Rock, it was a game that was simply uglier than my stepmother, and she is downright hideous. Wow. It was close near the end of the first half. 28-17, to Mercy was down. But Whitfield came back. Two touchdowns late in the first half and rolled from that point on. Mm. Whitfield quarterback Trey Miller, what an outstanding athlete. Touchdown pass, kickoff return, 90 yards, simply amazing. Mercy's touchdowns from William Pearl, the quarterback. He had a touchdown dive and two touchdown passes, one to Dominique McDermott and one to David Gomer. Don't you like the way that name sounds, Gomer? I do. It sounds like a lovely French cheese. <laughs> and then Mercy was playing without one of their top players, Christian Willis, who's one of the best running backs we've seen all year. And we really missed him. Well, they did really miss him. You, They only had 39 yards rushing last night. Uh, last week, I think they had close to 400 yards rushing. Uh, so, yes, that's pretty significant. Now, not that Christian Willis could get 400 yards rushing all by himself, but it certainly takes pressure off the other running backs. So, terrible. Terrible loss for them. Defensively, uh, Will Simmons once again led the way with 11 total tackles, and Jarrell Bank had added 11 himself. Do you think the Mercy defense will be able to respond next week? You know, honestly, uh, Rock, I have no idea. They've been struggling all year. And you just have to wonder, you know, is their offense going to be able to pull out two more victories the way their defense has been playing? But who knows? Anything's possible. You know, I could be driving a Porsche next week, and I could win the million dollars through a lotto. Anything's possible, it's correct? It's true, and I think they will bounce back. Uh, usually after a loss, teams either respond with a more significant loss or they come back fighting. And I think Coach Brian Pinnabel has raised a team of fighters. They will fight next week. One thing I like about Brian Pinnabel is he has that fire in his eyes. You looked in his eyes. I did. That's terrific. The last game we need to talk about is Sandy Creek, Harrelson County. Now, Sandy Creek upset third-ranked Carrollton the week before. I think they were riding high in this game. And Harrelson County really did a number on Braxton Lane last night and won 24-14. Lane was held to 15 yards receiving. I'm sorry, 42 yards receiving with a long of 15, no touchdowns. The week before, he had over 220 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Uh, so it's pretty significant when you can hamper his play. Rock, we've said this numerous times. If you hold Braxton Lane in check, Creek will probably lose. That's true. The people who did score touchdowns last night were Josh Williams and Rajon Neal, both rushing. But rushing, the... Sandy Creek was only held to 151 yards rushing, uh, which is more than Harrison County was able to amount, but Harrison County had 248 yards passing. Uh, I think things just kind of got away from Sandy Creek. When you look at how well the defense played, they picked, had two interceptions last night and sacked the quarterback three times. They just weren't able to get that offense going, and that's been the problem for the Patriots all year. One week they look good on offense, the next week they're hampered a bit. How do you think they respond next week? I think they're going to come back with a win. I really do. The rest of the schedule is very tough. I think off the top of my head, they're playing Cass next week or upcoming week. and It's going to be difficult, but Sandy Creek, who knows? Anything's possible well, with the Patriots. Region 6 AAA, I think the way you could describe it is downright wacky. Things are very strange for that region. You know, Third-ranked teams losing, teams that beat third-ranked teams losing the week after. Anybody can beat anybody on any given night. It makes for exciting play, but it's a little frustrating for fans. The interceptions last night for Sandy Creek were by Josh Holt and Matt Solomon. Matt Solomon had seven total tackles. Josh Holt had five. Zach Hilton had eight total tackles, three for a loss, and two sacks. So they had a very good night last night defensively, but not good enough and not able to convert those turnovers from points. Well, that's all we have for today. But we want you to be sure to tune in this week as we have a softball special and also a volleyball special talking about the volleyball tournament. We'll be back next Friday with more football on our picks, and we'll be shaving our mustaches to regain power. Thanks very much for tuning in. Stay classy, Faye County. It's game time.